You don't need to stay, okay? Okay, um, good afternoon. I'm very happy to welcome all of you at the SIH Grenke Innovation Festival 2022. We'll present here an exciting program with interesting startups. Before we start with the official program, I would like to know you a few rules that we can enjoy some pleasant hours here together. Please make sure to wear a mask. Of course, if you don't drink, yeah, that's an exception. And uh, while speaking on the podium, of course, you can take off the mask because then you're a speaker. That makes sure. Please put your cell phone on quiet mode and maybe flight mode even better, that we have enough energy here. And uh, we estimate that you are fine with being shown on the pictures and on the videos taken on the event. If not, just uh, let the people know here. I here we welcome our host for the words of welcome. First of all, Professor Victoria Bisch, President of SIH, Berlin University of Applied Science. Good afternoon. Really good to see you all here. Yeah, we can here be together. We plan to do our last SRH Grenke Innovation Festival in November, and we were forced to say due to Corona, it's not possible. And sorry, still due to Corona, I have to ask you to wear a mask, but I'm happy, yeah, that probably in the next two weeks, we are not any longer forced to do so, but thank you for the understanding. And I hope that you have really a lot of attention today, because I know that all the teams, and I a warm welcome to our teams, I participated in the rehearsal, are very excited, prepared a lot, yeah, and are really eager to present you the, your ide their ideas. And of course, a great thank you to Mr. Wolfgang Wenke himself. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have such a festival, being such generous to our students, because you will today give every final, uh, every winner well, of a track, yeah, also uh, uh, money that is something that is really an, an incentive to present something. But I'm also happy to have such an expertise jury today. Yeah, Annabel Ternes will um, uh, tell you who is in front here and will decide whether you will win your track or not. I'm really impressed and I thank you all for coming, for participating in our SRH Grand Innovation Festival. And I know we have a lot of presentations today. So we have all, everyone has to speak very fast today, yeah, and, and make the points really precise. And therefore, my last words is have fun and enjoy and have a wonderful afternoon today with us as SRH. Thank you. So the next speaker for some welcome words is um, Mr. Wolfgang Grenke, honorary um, senator of the SIH Berlin University of Applied Science. I welcome you here on the stage. Yeah, a warm welcome for me to you too. I'm happy to be here. It's a nice weather day, and I'm happy that you are not going uh, outside uh, to enjoy the, the good weather, but staying here with us for this wonderful event. Um, I'm very happy uh, um, that we have, um, I'm sure, that we have very interesting uh, presentations later, and uh, now uh, I think we can continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Grenke. He's today here in different roles, so he's not just one of the jury members, he is also the host, and he will be also my talk guest uh, later on, so in th at least three roles here. So um, it's a pleasure for me to introduce in a few words uh, each of the jury members, um, which could take for each of you, I think, at least one hour, if I want to mention all the positions and uh, really important things you have done in your life. <laughs> so let me try to fit it in a few sentences for each of you. And uh, about Wolfgang Renke, I, I think I don't need to say anything. Otherwise, I have to say so many company for mechanical engineering constructions. Welcome here in the jury.
Professor Fritz Neff, Professorship for Production Technology and Automation, Introduction of Microsystems Technology and Construction of a Clean Room for Hybrid Integrated Microsystems, Member of the Board, AIN Network. Welcome. Matthias Hornberger, Chairman of the Board, Cyberforum Karlsruhe, CFO Atevia AG, CFO Kizu, I hope I pronounce it right, and our Managing Director for Ever Healthy Foundation. Welcome. <laughs> Professor Angela Diel Becker, graduate psychologist, professor and head of the business administration course, German French management at the Baden Württemberg and Cooperation State University in Karlsruhe, project coordination of DFDS Emma. Welcome. Dr. Hans Hubschneider, Chairman of the Board of the Regional Energy Network Focus.NIG, uh, which bundles education, research, and startup support in the technology region of Karlsruhe, founded today's PTV Planung Transport Verkehr AG, which with more than 700 employees, the international market leader in the field of planning and optimization of mobility systems. Welcome. <laughs> René Ullmann. Vice President IHK Karlsruhe, Managing Director of Adidata GmbH, the Global Specialist for Industrial Measurement, Technology and Automation. Welcome. <laughs> Professor Dr. Bernhard Küppers, Head of the Gründer Institut SIH Heidelberg and Head of the Entrepreneurship Course at the SIH Fernhochschule Mobility University, Mobile University. Riedlingen, welcome. Professor Dr. Matthias Waldkirch, Assistant Professor of Entrepreneurship and Innovation in Family-Owned Firms, Head of the Entrepreneurship and Family Firm Institute at EPS in Österreich-Winkel. Welcome. So, uh, before we start uh, with track one, and this is community platforms, I would like to know some information from Mr. Grenke about his connection to Berlin and Karlsruhe, because some of you I know had a long trip this morning, an early trip this morning, and therefore I'm very interested in knowing a little bit more, Mr. Grenke, um, about your commitment to a connection between Karlsruhe and Berlin, um, and the technology region in Karlsruhe, of course. Uh, so what is the connection all about, that why Karlsruhe and Berlin in particular? I think we have just heard uh, at the presentation of the jury uh, that uh, there are a lot of uh, institutions in Karlsruhe which are all fixed a little bit on the B2B business. Uh, and uh, my feeling is in Berlin there's more um, startups and other uh, companies which are looking more to the B2C area. And so I believe that this both fits good together. <laughs> And so we can improve and really produce a win-win situation. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a great uh, synergy which can we uh, which can we realize. And where do you see the potentials concrete? Maybe just a few points. Uh, I think the most important is to ha look to the um, um, yeah. Well, let me say existing strengths which we have in uh, in Germany. Um, and we have to combine this with modern t technology, especially of course with. Um, um, digitalization with um, yeah, uh, artificial in, in, uh, intelligence and, and, so, and so on. Um, and uh, when we combine this good, we have an advantage compared with other uh, companies and, and other, uh, then of course with other uh, countries in the world in the same way. Thank you so much. So let me proceed with the first track. I just said it's a community and communities can be really different. So I'm really looking forward to the pictures of the first track of mainly students from the School of Management from SIH. We start with Expatino. I don't know where I have to look. Okay, an online support forum for international students to simplify their life in Germany, founded by Fabian schmidt lostberg I have a short question. Who in this room is an international student? Can you please raise your hand? 
Wow. So, Expertino is the online community that enables international students to study and succeed in Germany. We are completely revolutionizing how international students experience Germany. Now, I'm almost daily here in the startup lab, and I made many friends with international students. And what problems they are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, it's mind-boggling, it's actually crazy. But that even starts before they move to Germany. You, as international students, you didn't have the assistance and guidance to find a suitable university in Germany. On the other hand, there are universities like the SRH, they want to grow enrollment and need to present themselves to international students. Now in Germany, the problems get real. It's a nightmare to be an international student here. There is a pattern in these problems. They range from finding an accommodation, pretty tough, jobs, language barriers, culture shocks, you name it, the list goes on and on. And those problems are often passed on to university staff and they have to manage student needs, which is very stressful and time consuming. And then we have companies out here and you need to hire talents urgently. In fact, the German labor market needs 400,000 employees each year. So what is our solution? We connect international students from abroad to universities in Germany and international students in Germany to companies. Through Expertino, international students get instant access to study programs, jobs, the most needed information, empowering groups and forums, listings where you can compare accommodation and universities and events. Now, international, um, universities can engage international students in Germany and grow enrollment. Companies gain early access to international talent. Why us? I'm a freelance web developer and work prior in uh, high-tech um, tech recruiting startups. My co-founder, Swesha, from Delhi, sh she was once an international student herself. She founded the company German Portals, and they consult international students on how to apply for jobs and university in Germany. But why is it so important? We have up to 80 thousand international students who enroll yearly at German universities. They bring with them a buying power of 1 billion euros. We have 380 education institutions and more than 400,000 international students here enrolled. A staggering 69% of international students prefer to stay in Germany to work for a few years. This is perfect for the German labor market who needs 400,000 um, employees each year. So we accompany international students before they enroll in Germany until they exit to the German labor market. Um, where are we? So our MVP with all the features described above is live. We have 80 international students. We placed three international students at a company. We had several fruitful talks with universities and through the company of my co-founder, she placed 70 international students at German universities. Um, if you're an international student, there are posters in this uni, um, and you can simply scan the QR code and sign up, or you go to the website expertino.com, and if you're a company and would like to have access to this incredible talent pool, I'm happy to share with you more later on. Thank you. Your Fabians, please stay here for a few minutes. We have two minutes left for the jury to ask questions. Um, two minutes means maybe two or three questions, so please go ahead. Uh, business model? Um, there are at the moment three components to the business model. The first is subscription for universities and companies based on the features they would like to have, posting jobs, posting events. And the second uh, business uh, component is um, we match international students to universities. There's usually a commission. And uh, the same for companies, so ac active sourcing for companies. And the third is in the listings where international students can compare services, um, for example, accommodation, everyone who needs to come to Germany needs an insurance, bank account, um, and so on. Um, there, this will be embedded with affiliate marketing links. The, 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 
So um, we sell the community as a product to um, universities, and um, they roll out the product. So similar to, for example, Microsoft Teams, or to, uh, let's say, Slack, um, we provide them with the platform, and they then say to their students, hey, you get all the information you need as an international student here. Yes, um, it's, it's related to the chicken and egg problem. So um, we have groups in the platform, for example, and the universities and companies operate official groups. Um, in these groups, there are subgroups, documents, videos, and other uh, resources. And um, universities can upload uh, their content and make all these informations more accessible. And um, this is how we solve it. Like, if we have like 15, 20 universities, they upload for their students. And there are also chat function um, where you can connect to other international students. You have groups where you can discuss about anything. So I think um, that, that can, can be solved. So thank you very much, Fabian. Now it works like this. Uh, the jury members should decide now which grade they put in the height. You have some, um, some, some uh, papers in the front. If you, this is for just raising your hand with a number of your choice. And um, please use the slip in front of you to take a note, write it down the same grade. Of course, Rajan, sitting here next to you, will take the box, going around, and then um, taking all the small slips for you to just collect them afterwards. Exactly, afterwards. Exactly, we have from one to five as school grades. Yeah, exactly, just that also the audience behind you can, can see it. Thank you so much. Then you have. So you have time until the end of the track to write down your final grade, which Rajan will collect later on. And I'd like to welcome here on the stage um, Ashiel Shikev with the startup Finhax, which offer international money, money transaction at least chargers. Welcome. So, hello everyone. I hope everyone can uh, hear me well. <clears throat> so, before I start presenting my uh, business idea, I would like to tell you a story about my family. Yeah? So, uh, I have a wife and a daughter. They live back in my country. And I'm a student here. My name is Ashir. And uh, we live separately for a couple of years already. Of course, I try to uh, make everything uh, so planned out, but I still need to support my family every, every day, practically, yeah. So, am I in the unique situation? Of course not. There's uh, tons of people living across the world uh, uh, apart from their families. And the simple fact that the uh, international remittance uh, market is estimated at 400 billion euros, uh, dollars sorry, a year is a proof of my theory. Yeah? So how do these people send money? So there are several options. Uh, first of all, they can use the banking transfers but it's unfortunately slow, but very affordable. Secondly, they can use the uh, money transferring operators like Western Union. It will be fast, but unfortunately it will be expensive. There are also other options to do this as well, and they all have some short, uh, uh, sh shortages and some problems associated with them. So here I'm introducing FinHax, the FinTech company for international money transfers who is promising to provide the lowest uh, fees, who is promising the, making the instant payments and uh, uh, easy to use um, interface, yeah? So before I go deeper in details, I would like to make a simulation here. 
So we will send money across this room to Maxim in the back, one using FinHax, and second using two banks, which will be uh, intermediaries, yeah? So uh, if you please start uh, for the time saving, uh, I've already explained what they're supposed to do, so Bank A starts uh, the transfer, okay? And uh, Virginia, could you please give five euros to Maxim? Did you get it? Thank you. So how long was that? Seconds. Seconds, yeah. So uh, you might ask me, why, why are you making these bold statements? Why are you saying that you could do it? Uh, there's a PayPal. They can do it immediately as well. There's banking for Europeans. It's, it's understandable. You only use the banks. You, you make the transfers and money arrive, right? But the problem is that not everyone has a banking account. Uh, not everyone living in the European Union, yeah? So, uh, unfortunately, we are uh, separated not only by the boundaries, we are also separated by the, uh, not the physical distance uh, as well, but we are mostly separated by the access to financial instruments and markets. So, what is uh, good for European uh, consumer is not always good in my country, for example. So, uh, so we see the problem here, yeah? It's, it's right here. There are developing countries, there are underdeveloped, uh, d very developed countries. What can solve a problem? People. People can solve the problem. People can help each other to make the transfers. And that's why FinHacks is the first decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, uh, global uh, money transferring company. So it will work the, uh, this way. Uh, someone, let's say, want to send money from Germany to Kyrgyzstan, let's say. He makes the payment here, and with uh, uh, FinHacks will find a person who will make the final payment in Kyrgyzstan using uh, preferred methods. Yeah? So if the uh, uh, recipient uses bank account, he will deposit to the bank account. If they want cash, they will get the cash. If they want some other wallets, they will be uh, deposited there. So, uh, coming back to my story that I was telling you. So, using this principle, I sent the money to my family and hopefully they're coming this summer to spend the time together. I hope it will be a great one. Uh, and finally, FinHax will help people living in different parts of the world to take care of each other and hug each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashir. Um, and now the stage is open for some questions from the jury members. Who wants, would like to drop a question? Yes, please. I'm sorry, the banks are still not done. After. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> Okay, please. Thank you. So if I understood correctly, you transfer the money to a, s a person who continues to transfer it uh, to the final destination. What makes you sure uh, that the person to whom you forward the money will continue to forward it to its final destination? Yeah, that's absolutely a legitimate question. Uh, how, we ensure we, how does fin, uh, FinHax ensure that? We ensure that by financial motivation. The people, uh, it's not of course the number one. Number one is helping communities, but the secondly, people will earn as well by making these payments. So just uh, for a second, uh, the deposits over 100,000 uh, 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 euros, they have negative percentage, yeah? So they have to pay to keep this money here, but uh, uh, People who sign up for this service, they can uh, earn money, but don't pay the negative uh, percentage, yeah? So they're financially motivated to do so. A further question? Yes, please. Yeah, so this is an absolute red ocean um, in terms of competition. Uh, how um, do you want uh, to, to reach that penetration needed uh, and do you need a banking license for that? 
Yes, uh, it's also a very legitimate question. Thank you. So we will start doing, uh, not focusing on the global world, uh, allowing all the people. So we will start with bilater bilateral uh, connection. Yeah? Let's say we start with Germany and all the countries in the uh, post-Soviet Union, yeah? because they share something in common. So uh, that's how we're going to start. That's how we want to uh, take off, kind of, and uh, gain the traction. And according to the second question, uh, it depends on the way how we will set up the, uh, our uh, business model. If it's uh, an information system, then we don't need a banking uh, uh, license. However, it's a process which is already uh, un undergoes uh, uh, to f clear all the legal aspects. Yeah, thank you. Watch the money now will, uh, <laughs> I understand, it's a totally fair statement, yeah, thank you. So, thank you, Ashir. So, it's a f now the, uh, the turn of the jury. Please raise the paper you would like to give. Please raise a grade you would like to give. Uh, please, hi, that the audience behind you can see it too, of course, on both sides, so thank you. Thank you, Ashir. Please take a note on your slide. <laughs> and um, Prakyat Sabkala pitches the recruitment solution with a startup flow. Thank you for being here on stage. So I am here to talk about the future of education. Uh, so we all know that uh, people take loans for their education. Well, uh, there are plenty of public universities here in Germany, but not everybody get admitted in those. So normally people take loans for their education and uh, spend half of their life in returning back that loan. A very recent study by educationdata.org uh, mentioned that the return on investment for conventional college degrees is not that great. Uh, usually students start uh, seeing good returns after four to five years. So yes, it's not that great, obviously. So imagine, you know, you, you earn a professional skill, uh, get hired, and then pay back the institute, then pay back the college. Unfortunately, there are no such provisions right now. But I am here to create one. Let's see how. My name is Prakyat. I'm the founder of Flow. And yeah, so what is Flow? Flow is an online education platform uh, where you can learn tech skills for free. Uh, it's also a platform that can be utilized by companies to train their workforce, to skill their work, uh, workforce with the essential digital knowledge, which is especially required after COVID. Um, who will be our target audience? So individual and companies. Uh, under individuals, there are three subcategories. One is fresh college graduates. Uh, second is people who want to change their career. Uh, third is people uh, who are already in the workforce, tech workforce, who are already working in the uh, tech environment. And uh, yeah, the main category, second category is companies. Uh, how will flow make money? Very important question. So uh, people who are fresh college graduates or in final year will not charge any money to them, will simply sign income share agreement with them, with fresh college graduates and people who want to change their career. So we'll sign income share agreements with them. People who are already working in the workforce will um, charge some money to them and company straightforward will charge money. Uh, then structure of the course. Uh, every, uh, every like, you know, thing that you look around, full-time, part-time, uh, self-paced learning, we'll all integrate that. Uh, yeah, and uh, USP. So uh, in my research, I have like come across only one uh, such platform that you know offers uh, this kind of thing but there are no professional certification like 
tech courses are there, but uh, it it only I think uh, supports a particular set of audience, not the combination of all that which I am trying to do. Uh, and more than that, I think uh, for the pitch, when I was preparing, I came across another study by European Union. It was published by their uh, digital department. And uh, 2021, for quarter one, uh, the results were uh, published. So there were around 9 lakh job openings in tech for quarter one of 2021. And only uh, 4 lakh 80,000 uh, positions were filled. So that's roughly around 40-45%. So I know that you know there are uh, institutes, there are platforms that are already doing it. But whatever they are doing is not enough. More needs to be done, which is what I'm trying to achieve. And I aspire to do that with Flow. Thank you. So thank you very much. Now there's um, time for questions from the jury members. Who likes to start with one of the three questions you can ask? Yes, Mr. Waldkirch. Uh, like uh, switching between companies uh, so I know the problem of the workforce I know that there's a skill gap that needs to be filled and uh, I can do it I if I can think it I can implement it yeah yeah one more thing I forgot to tell about my co-founder uh, she's a designer she's also been working in uh, tech for last seven years and some of her creatives were live on Times Square. So, uh, you know, in terms of product design, we can achieve a great thing over there okay, in that area. Thank yeah. you. Second yeah. question from here. Uh, as, I yeah. as I understood, uh, it's an online platform right. to find something to for changing the own career. Career, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, to have the occasion to learn some skills, right. you said. Yeah. Which type of skills? Tech uh, skills, coding, uh, then professional tech certifications like Salesforce admin, uh, AWS admin, developer, yeah. like that. And all could be done online? Yeah, all online. could be done online. Yeah. And uh, like, you know, uh, people will pay only when they get hired. With the certification at the end. Sorry? With the certification at yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. Because uh, the motive is to uh, fill the gap and to get people hired. Okay, there's time left for a very short question, a yeah. very short answer. Please so keep in mind. Huge cash flow needs. Uh, initially. Initially. Uh, initially. Yeah. You have an estimate, and how do you track your students if they work somewhere? Uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make them appear for the interviews in the partner companies. We'll sign a contract with the tech companies, tech startups, and uh, that's how we'll track it. And LinkedIn is also there. So if somebody is getting hired, obviously they'll update it on LinkedIn and they will be obliged to share 30, 40, 30, 40 of their first year salary with Flow. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. So it's time to raise your papers with grades. Thank you. Do you? Do you? So time to choose. Okay, thank you. So, last but not least, had meter closes the first track was Stuttgart, not to uh, not a Stuttgart, but a Stuttgart, Stuttgart, a platform that makes life in Germany easier for international students. Welcome here. Hi guys, I'm. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Okay, cool. Good evening, dear jury and my respected friends. So uh, I'm I'm Heath Mehta, founder, CFO, and the in one point or the other. You know, you get stuck somewhere, you need someone to help it, and you know, you move forward, and you succeed in your life. And exactly that's what we do for Indian students who are coming to Berlin for the first time. 
Okay, so I would like to tell you about how did we come up with this idea to start this business. And uh, we start with, in 2019, me and my friend planned to come to Berlin. We were very clear that we want to come here and study in Berlin. And so we decided to apply in SRH. We got acceptance letter and then we were ready. But we had no clue what to do thereafter. It is difficult. We had questions in our mind. How to get visa? Where to get visa? Are there any other legal documents and uh, documents required for the G from German government that we need to fulfill and so on. But we found the solution. We re did, did some research, it took time, about a month, not more. But then uh, we di definitely did it. We booked tickets, came here. It was not an easy journey for us. We came here and the moment we landed the questions, we were like, ah, where to go? How to travel? because we have no idea how the system works over here. So, but definitely thanks to my little bit of German skills that I had, I found a ticket using help of some German person. We made it through. It, it's been two years ever since we have been still solving problems that happen every day in our lives. And most of the students who come from India have no idea what's happening. Not just Indian, but all the other students coming from elsewhere as well. We booked a hotel and stayed there because we had no idea how to find an apartment. We found it, it was not cheap, but it was very difficult to find an apartment. So we do this, we could not relax, we could not sit, we could not enjoy Europe after, even after coming here. And that was really a shock for us because we were just trying to solve problems that we had. When we turn back after two years, we think that would be amazing if there was some agency over here who could have helped us getting our legal things done, getting our appointments done, getting our banks open, we would have been focused and completely focused on studies. We would have so much of time to do extracurricular activities, participate in a lot of events, and do a lot of great marvels. And that's why we come up with Stuttgart, Students Guardian. What do we do? It's very simple. We collect the data from the students with their consent and use that for their helps, like city registration, apartment hunting, visa appointments, help them with the documentation along with that, finding them a job as soon as possible, registering them with Embassy of India, which I have already made connections and talked with them already. So that would help them get community, uh, you know, getting, getting them to know different communities. If they belong to a certain part of India, they can connect like that with different communities. Opening a bank account, renewal of passports, providing legal help, building networks, which we've already done. What does that do? It makes each student who has come over here independent, not just physically, mentally, but also emotionally. That is our aim because I have been through a lot of problem. My friend has been through a lot of problem. We don't want other students literally to go through it. We invested a lot of time building these networks. We would just like to forward them to the students to help them in some way or the other so that it makes the life really easy and amazing. This business is a win-win not only for us, but also for the business partners, banks, fitness centers, guides, colleges, and also the embassy, because it would have the list of students who get registered in case of any emergency or communal event, they can notify them. So we believe in working together and we believe in growing together. That's Student Guardian, thank you so much. Time for questions. Yes, please. Oh, it's, it's very much simple. Right now, we are still focusing in finding out different partners. We have just talked with different people, how that it might work for me, for you, for banks, for students. So it's just in the process phase. We are not as developed as Fabian or maybe Ashir, but we're just working on that yet. Second question, Steve Becker. Why are the services of Stuttgart restricted to students coming from India? Exactly. Uh, it's, again, the community thing that I am Indian, and when I see an Indian, it's, diff it's very easy for us to connect in some way. I know embassy, I know different people who are working in different job sectors, but I don't know if someone is coming from Nigeria or someone is coming from USA. It's difficult for me to understand their mindset. If we grow, we have people from each country, they can also help their people to grow. So that's the plan so far. We focus on India right now. And then once we are set, have a platform, we move with all the other nationalities slowly. One third question. Yes. How do you solve your regional problem if your students come to 
Berlin and you do have a part of in Munich and Hamburg, how do you manage it? Right now we just focus in just focus Berlin because Berlin itself is so huge when I actually went and uh, tried to see job opportunities, banking systems, students just coming to Berlin are tremendously in huge numbers. So I think we, if we start small, then we make a lot of difference. Otherwise, it would just make a mess. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So it's time again to take your choice and raise your paper with the grade. You're welcome. And who's already that far, um, you have the opportunities, of course, to go into the voting again or check about the community's platforms category. And once again, before Raja is taking the slips, if you want to change a grade, so this is a time where you can do this. Raise first, please, the paper. Yes, with a grade. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now it's said it's time to give Raja your slips for this category. And while this process, let me introduce already the next track. It's about sustainability goals, where I'm very happy about, as I'm managing director for the International Institute for Sustainability Management, of course. And first of all, before we start with this, I take the chance. I'd like to ask Mr. Grenke. First of all, I would like to take the chance to ask Mr. Grenke again about setting up a company. Mr. Grenke, this is yours again. <laughs> we talked earlier about creative approaches um, and what helps a customer. And how does a company have to um, be set up for perhaps a specifically startup uh, to be successful in these days? I think um, we must learn that um, um, we have to look for the customer advantage. Um, this is for me the most important point uh, because uh, when I'm looking back to my own history, uh, founding a company uh, now uh, 45 years ago, uh, this was always the focus. Um, the customer uh, advantage and of course a competitive advantage. Um, we have heard this uh, even too with, by the question of my colleagues here uh, to ask what we, uh, we are doing uh, or they are doing um, in the, uh, compared with the, with the other companies which are always, all, always existing. Um, and this is, of course, one of the most important points. Yeah, thank you so much. When you emphasize these points, is these the critical points or the crucial points which, uh, when you make them right, um, a company can run on its own? Or are there some other crucial points you want to point out which are relevant? Yeah, of course, you, you, you need, of course, a, a strong idea. You must um, have an access to the market. You must sometimes have the financial uh, possibilities to do this. It's not so totally easy as it looks in the first moment, but I'm sure uh, there are more potential as um, we always are imagine. There are more ideas and it's, it's, it's the people are strong enough to do this. this is what it was in the history show, so it was in my own experience so, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, the students here will have this uh, experience too. I completely agree with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we start then with a track two. As I said, it's about sustainability goal and um, I would like to ask to come here to the front as a first stop, um, Tobias Lippek from Haus der Künste in Berlin and Die Etage, a campus for sustainable education and contemporary art on stage. Mm, I'm sure about that. Can you bring this chair?
Hello everyone. Who of you know Rummelsburger Bucht? Just raise your hand. Who of you read the news upon Coral World? Just raise your hand. Some, okay. I think we can do better as they are doing at the Rummelsburger Bucht right now. You wanna know how? I have a daughter. She's eight years old and she loves to bike. Sometimes we go to Treptor Park, which is close to Rummelsburger Bucht. We have an ice cream in the sun. I see her growing. It's a perfect moment. But we have also had some difficulties. When we were looking for childcare, maybe some of you know there's a lack of childcare places in Berlin. We were looking for schools. I was like, like that. Like, it worked out at the end, but it was very stressful. It's like booking a train in India. <laughs> I don't know if you met, if you did that. <laughs> it's, when I look to the future, she will need an apartment. That's going to be a mess. So each of those examples, we consider them as wicked problems. We could talk for each of those wicked problems for hours, I'm sure. My name is Tobias Lippek. I am studying social design master at the campus at Moritzplatz. And one thing you have to know about social designers, we love wicked problems. I'm working for Die Etage, which is School for Performing Arts Berlin. The Etage exists since 40 years, so managed as, as well Die Wende. Uh, today we would consider Die Wende as a transformation of society. As far as I know, at Rummelsburger Bucht, there's transformation happening right now. And there are four concepts that exist since as far as I know. The first is from Humboldt University, focus on education. Second is from initiative Bucht für Alle, focusing on social housing and local culture. The third is Coral World, looks that are going to do it. And the fourth one, you see here, Haus der Künste Berlin. Developing this campus, we were focusing on something else than on the wicked problems from nowadays. And now we go for some ancient wisdom. Doesn't matter if you go to Chichen Itza at Mexico, if you go to Acropolis at Athens, or the Colosseum at Rome, there are five basic essentials what communities need to have an identity. First is conviviality. Second, spirituality. Third, politics. Fourth, intellectual growth. And last but not least, trade and commerce. So we merged all those and did that in cooperation with the University for Applied Sciences at Erfurt. And now let's change from theory to practice. So what we need. For the next two years, we need to build up a team that will be led by me. But I need two more colleagues, one for the strategy part, communication, and the other one for the social media campaign we have to run to bring together all stakeholders going to be involved in that concept and to not bore you with all that detailed information, we brought out that book. It's a beautiful thing, it's recently printed for the first time, and I'm proudly to present it here at the Grenke Festival 2022. And we believe that there are places out there at Berlin where we are going to build that house. Doesn't matter if we go to Steglitz, Altes Heizkraftwerk, or we go to Pankow Ringlockschuppen, or 
if we go to Oberschweineöde, to the Bärenquell. But one day, I want to be standing there with my daughter, having an ice cream in the sun, and telling her that story. Thank you for your attention. That's it. Oh, thank you very much. So there's time to ask any questions from the jury. Who would like to start? And maybe, um, is the jury interested to see this a bit uh, into the forefront? Then we can bring it to the front that you can check it out a bit closer. Are you interested? Yeah, it's a bigger model, but in completely different language. Are you interested? Frankly, frankly I, I didn't uh, get the, the idea. Is it yeah. the special architecture? Is it uh, the community inside? Is it uh, a digital network around? So what is special about that, except for the nice dog? We talk to all in both city departments in Berlin, which is education, culture, urban okay. development. Okay. Well, we have been involved in the in the process of the Smart City Berlin, which is running since two years more or less. And what you mentioned, it's a combination of both. It's a top-notch architecture, but made for building of a community which uh, we can scale in every real estate we find interesting and that will be the task from today on in two years we're looking for public financing or who will, who will do the a public private partnership the gute das gute kita gesetz it's a law based for the involvement of child care the schulbau offensive it's a huge in initiative to build more schools. We have several big public fundings running in Berlin to create housing and social housing in the future. And we will be connected to all of those departments, to all of, of uh, those, but at the same time pre prevent a place for startup and for arts and culture. Give us a number, how much? Um, you mean for the construction or for the real estate? The real estate depends a lot on if it's a transformation of an old construction very, very or if it's... Very short, please. It's 200 million for the building we calculated so far. Okay. Yeah? But that's, um, it depends a lot on the place where it's going to be built. In the okay, we are already over the time. I okay. saw there's a raising hand from Mr. Waldkirch. Is it a very, very short question? As short as... Okay, good. So, thank you so much. Then it's about um, raising the hands with the grid above your head. <laughs> oh, that's good. Also from the audience, there are some, some further. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Then um, put the grade in onto your slip. Vielen Dank. So, and the next is uh, Lorenz Jäger, the founder of Fesh and Environment Friendly Fish and Vegetable Production. Please come here on stage. I'm not sure what he brings to the front, if he brings some fishes maybe. No. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Lawrence and uh, I'm not going to talk to about me today, but I'm going to talk about the biggest threat for humankind, climate change. And if you think I'm exaggerating right now, let me paint a picture for you. By 2030, we will cut down the rainforest even more until the point it's not producing enough moisture anymore, so it will turn into a dry savanna. By this, we will destroy or decisively change the global water cycle. By the 2050s, the oceans will be warmed up so much that, it, that they become more acidic and all coral reefs will die and the uh, fish stacks will collapse. By the 2080s, the, uh, the global heat will be ri ri risen by four degrees. This will cause 
a large part of the surface to be uninhabitable and the weather become more and more unpredictable. Still, I have a lot of friends that are telling me, I don't know how I can do anything against it. I'm just one single person. I, can't, I don't have any influence. Neither have I have the financial possibilities to really contribute at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a resource saving local and efficient food production. There is a largely weather independent type of food production of col uh, cultivating vegetables and raising fish in symbiosis called aquaponic farming. You use the fish waste and raise out of it the, the vegetables. This we tried in a in a small uh, in a small scale prototype farm and want to bring it to a larger scale system and for this I need your financial help. I can make all of this possible and bring the goods directly from the from the farm to to the end consumer and finally they will have a, f a fresher and more nutritious product than in organic supermarkets for the same price. And additionally the profits of the company, they shall be used to purchase further land, renature it, recover the biodiversity and build in a second level solar thermal power systems to provide the growing farm with enough heat and energy to run it uh, CO2 negative. We will be able, with 9 million, million euros, we will be able to build within two years the farm, the energy system, program the IT, uh, the IT infrastructure and run it profitable after eight months, eight months after the production started on a 70% capacity. I think this is huge and we would be able to provide 1% of uh, the inhabitants that were living in the inner district of Berlin with fresh vegetables and fish directly to their homes. So finally, what are we left with? We have consumers that are getting vegetables and fish on a higher quality than in the organic supermarkets for the same price. And additionally, they are able to support fighting climate change and uh, have a real contribution in helping us renature the land and uh, recover a lot of the biodiversity. So as I pointed out before, all I need to start this journey of recovering the world instead of destroying it further is 9 million euros and if you compare it to the possible damages that, are, that can be made through uh, destroying the nature even further and the impact it can have on the world, I think it's a, uh, it's a fair amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. Thank Maybe you so much. Maybe one more thing, because I saw some people smiling already when I mentioned 9 million euros. Think about it. Aren't your kids worth it? So, thank you very much. Time for questions. The technology again, fish wastes uh, uh, the, um, uh, to, to grow the standard vegetables. That's the technology? Yeah, so basically the technology is that there is a fish tank, there's fish living in, and basically their, their waste is going to be recycled, uh, like it's going to transfer to nitrates that are... Um, is that dependable uh, in terms of IT? Or what do you mean? can everybody do, uh, uh, do that? Basically everyone could do that, yeah. Are you uh, worried about the patent, the patent or? <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the type of how you're doing it, there are different methods of supplying the plants with water and nitrates. There are different types of converting uh, the fish shit into nitrates, mm -hmm. basically. And uh, yeah, so the the theory, the, the knowledge about it is uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Weikirch, next question. Yeah, um, we have that. Yeah. So how are you going to turn that into a good investment? So first of all, what is different from us than from most other 
hydroponic or aquaponic farms is they are usually uh, active in the B2B business. They mostly concentrate on one type of goods and then they deliver it to supermarkets and, uh, and sell it there. There are smaller companies that are, uh, that are also in the B2C market, but the difference there is that we're having a high focus on the, uh, on the ecological part and saving the environment. So that's the good feeling package that we're providing our customer with that they're able to do something good for the environment because we're running CO2 negative, we're, we renature land and recover biodiversity. So we have this full package of higher quality food combined with uh, yeah, just saving the environment. Thank you very much. Thanks. So time to put your grace and shoes. Choose your grade you want to give the startup idea, concept, and uh, put a note on your slip, please. Oh, you have two. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you so much. And with the startup Dry in Space, founder Jagadish uh, Pieni introduces an effective bio waste uh, disposal management. Welcome here on stage. Hi, uh, so we have dry and spare. Uh, who here would disagree that the most essential part, okay, one of the most essential part uh, for a survival of a living kind is a fertile soil. And one such underlooked crisis is soil degradation. If we all keep in mind that the, so, uh, that the survival of a humankind is, depends on a thin layer of soil, I think we would make some effort to put, uh, to restore it. And uh, one such way to do this is to make compost of the food waste. We have been already doing that with the bio bins at home. And, uh, but the normal bio bins at home usually stinks or have flies in infestation. And uh, this is an everyday problem that we face, especially in the summer. And coming from tropical countries, we have faced a lot more of that. Uh, and this is exactly where our story began as well. Uh, stinking bio waste, uh, not just um, degrade, I mean, uh, demotivates us even if we want to separate some of the bio waste. And uh, fly infestation, it also becomes a primary source for a lot of diseases, especially for those who are handling them. And these food waste thinking and fly infestation usually happens because it starts degrading, uh, de decomposing immediately after the disposal. And uh, because of this, uh, most, we are losing the most valuable part of the minerals that is needed for the nourishment of the soil. And uh, so we uh, came up with, uh, we are two passionate engineers who came from a tropical country who faced all of this a lot more. And uh, we have come here trying to solve some of the simple but uh, one of the big biggest problems in our uh, summer at least uh, with the dry and spare. And dry and spare is a small low-tech uh, system that can be used as a dustbin, uh, which looks like a normal bin, but has a secret little trick on the inside of the skin. So I'm Monisha. Uh, I have been working in business development, uh, project manager. Uh, that might be landfill or mineral recovery process. And also we have uh, observed a lot of problems related to the food waste from the, from the disposal point throughout the transportation and as well as during the process of mineral recovery, uh, like composting. So our uh, solution uh, was, was here. So uh, the problem was itself the solution. So the answer is dehydration at the source itself. This will prevent, prevent the food waste from going bad and creating false smells. 
And also, the, uh, through this, we can store the food, food waste for a longer duration and use it for several different purposes. So here, uh, so finding for a solution, we started for using, using some complex technologies to reverse the decomposition process and uh, to pre preserve the food waste itself, but we failed. And, we, uh, and then we started the process once again and started to observe the process even more closer uh, throughout the, uh, through the decomposition process and the food waste generation itself. From there, from years of uh, testing and uh, correction and uh, redoing, we came up with this simple uh, household device. Uh, so this is a half-eaten apple that I forgot about. So usually I would throw this into a, bi a normal bio bin that I have at home, but I would wait till the bin gets full for me to throw it out into the collector. But by that time, it would have already started degrading, like uh, decomposing like this. And uh, similarly for my other food products as well. By that, we lose a lot of minerals that is needed for the soil. Uh, but with, what if I can tell you, with dry and spare, I could spare that, uh, all those minerals and the time and energy in a matter of few minutes. So in this era, it is not only possible to store food for a long time, but with dry and spare, I think you can even store those mineral-rich food waste. Uh, yeah, food e energy from that waste. With it, we can all contribute together to the combat of uh, the combat against the soil degradation itself. Better living is our rights, and it is also our responsibility. So we are here looking for some constructive and a financial support uh, to sustain the idea and to establish the firm. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have two to three questions left. Maybe Mr. Weikirch? Uh, I'm very quick. What's your customer group? Who uh, is this for? For yeah. the residents. Sorry. Yeah. Usually for the residents, uh, I mean, everyday, day to day residents like you and me. Uh, it, how many people have? You know, uh, this is, uh, we only have a prototype model for now. We are working on the working model already, and we have already been looking up for the patent rights as well. Second question. to an extent and dispose it to, uh, into the bio bins. The problem is usually people will have uh, it packed inside a plastic bag and they, uh, the plastics are not allowed into the black bins. So it will be going, going into the rest bins. Here we will be dehydrating the bio waste to an extent where you can actually uh, hold it in your hand. It doesn't stink anymore or it doesn't stick and it is uh, highly hygiene enough so that you can... Uh, uh, it doesn't have the moisture so you can just remove it and dispose it. You won't need covers for it. Yes. And, and how do you try? Is that by sun or by, by leaving it there? Or how do you try? So we use a little bit of uh, electricity from the uh, ah. from the nets or from the photovoltaics. Okay. There are two variants. Uh, okay. This is just to accelerate the process of dehydration. Uh, so the other things will be done chemically but not, uh, not thermally. How much money do you need? Uh, uh, we are looking at yeah, uh, as of now, uh, one one bin would cost around 40 to 50 euros. So in a long-term run, maybe we're looking for like 50,000 to 85,000 for us to start up, establish the firm and uh, have it working already. Sorry, I'm yes. a technical guy. <laughs> <laughs> We have time for a very short. Euro. Yeah. Four, four, three, four, zero. Four, zero. Is this your sales price or your purchase price? It's a sales price. Okay. And what are the costs? Uh, you mean the cost split? Production. Production cost. Um, warranty. Yeah. Uh, we have. We, the have. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a lot of components inside, so there are little little uh, price. Uh, differences for each of them, but at the end, uh, on the sales point of view, it costs around 40 euros. But maybe when we have tie ups with companies, uh, then I think we could reduce it even more. Uh, but uh, so at this point, <laughs> you have no idea of what the amount was. 
Yeah, we, we do have that in Virgin. Maybe she yeah. forgot yeah. to yeah. tell about that. But you're not saying the joke. So at this point, uh, for, the st for the starting price, we have 10%. 10 without, knowing, without knowing the cost? So for the, for the starters. Yes. We have, we have been working on that as well. We, we have just been working on the idea and perfecting the model till now. So we have a working model before we uh, put it out and market. When it was in the con concept stage, we had a talk with uh, BSR, the, the Berlin uh, Startleisure Rene Goons Pharma. And they are uh, pretty much looking forward for this. But we need some uh, support to build the company uh, and as well as the working prototype itself. So thank you very much. If you want to share a few more insights um, with him from person to person later on, you have time later on in the break or afterwards. So uh, thank you very much. And it's now about the jury. <laughs> wow. Super. Very good. And uh, put your comments already on your slip. And then, last but not least, the last startup in this track, Fajimi Irandus introduces an aroma face mask, an aromatic face mask with multiple health and practical benefits. And I think we will see something, right? To wear a mask or not to wear a mask is really a problem. So maybe to be or not to be is also a problem, but not that big. So it's already over. But nowadays, we've got a very big problem. So we face a pandemic. So we passed it somehow, but it effects and side effects still remain. So, so we should somehow buy every day or buy daily mask for ourselves because it's still important to have it so in Berlin in Germany so we use FFP2 masks and so believe it or not so many of us are annoyed because of this situation it's not very easy to wear I'm sure that so maybe uh, many of you are agree with me but so it is what it is so uh, so this is not only our uh, self-impression about it, so self-thinking uh, about this problem of masks, we did some research about it, so we sent a questionnaire to a hundred of international fellows all over the world and asked some questions about that. Is it uh, easy for you to use your mask or not? And then they replied more than 17 percent, more than 17, so seven, zero, percent of these guys told us that they are very, very uh, annoying with this using the mask. And so, of course it is, so why and what are these problems? So, the most problem of them is uh, the breathing is a little bit problematic after some hours. The smell of their mouth makes some headaches for themselves. And so, of course, so if you are in a train for a two hours, three hours, four hours journey, all with the mask, so it's very, very annoying for you. It's very bad for you. So, and uh, yeah, so on the other hand, on the other hand, so uh, the mask is literally invented for uh, one day use. So why should we we use more, more than it? So for two days, three days, and this is not a good idea to reuse it. So 
uh, these problems are uh, very important and the last but not least, so the mask is, uh, so if we use it every day and throw it out, so it's not a very green technology, so it's not a sustainable, so we, if somehow we can have it with ourselves in the long term with a lower cost, it would be perfect. That's why, so our, the idea is to, uh, so, have something like this, which is maybe it's not very, very clear because it is only a sample and it's a printed, 3D printed. So it's, uh, so the design is ergonomic, so it's, it has a very uh, low uh, impact on your face or pressure on your face, so it's, uh, yeah, changeable. And so we, we use some aromatic things, aromatic particles inside with a humidifier. So which this hum humidifier is, uh, somehow uh, uh, changeable and you can use it so as a external humidifier in your room as well so so you can use it inside it you can use it separately for yourself and uh, the most important part is the aromatic things aromatic particles you see it's uh, inside this so when you use it and you can break it so the useful particles comes to your uh, breathing system and of course it prevents the uh, air pollution it prevents the uh, COVID particles or COVID virus uh, in, in the world so it is uh, quite things and of course with using this uh, uh, with using this aromatic particles and breathing that it has the pain relief and calming effect and of course uh, it prevents COVID and the air pollution for you and uh, very good for so the, uh, the some uh, some people who has the same sex. So uh, we uh, we are a team. So the designer, or my colleagues. So we've got a herbal uh, a herbal uh, expert in the uh, in the team. So and I'm the technology consultant, and so we are here for so presenting this mask. It is uh, already designed and. We hope that we can convince the jury to support us for further development. Thank you so much. So the floor is for the jury members to ask some questions. Please um, go ahead. Who would like to start? Mm -hmm. The next pandemic is in the way. So, <laughs> yes, believe it or not, the you next pandemic is in the way. It's not, it's not, it's not my. <laughs> so, please, the <laughs> previous pandemic was one century ago. So, please keep in mind. So, the, in one century ago, which was Spanish flu, was the greatest pandemic in the whole world. In that time, the whole population of the world was 1.5 billion. Nowadays, we've got more than 7.5 billion. So, the next pandemic will not be the next century. It will be in the 20 to 25 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, of course, of course, by the way, so uh, it yes. It is useful for COD <laughs> for and allergies. Uh, there are some aromatic plants it has that is useful for COD and allergies and also COVID uh, and also uh, air pollution. Air pollution as well, so yeah. Hmm. That depends. Further question? Yes, please. Oh, yeah, good. Um, uh, my question is uh, to the technology uh, you use there. Uh, I see a uh, ultraviolet uh, lamp. Is, 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 are you using ultraviolet uh, radiation in there? Are you using a special liquid inside there for the aromatic? Uh, no feeling, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, could you be sure or uh, tell us that you are not using something which will be toxic, that which will not uh, give a toxic reaction in the exactly. Purpose? We 
did a lot of research on the particles which is inside this, some sort of eucalyptus or something like that. And these are so our experts who is uh, right now in, in New Zealand. Is, uh, she is a play, uh, she is a, a doctor. She's a, me a medician. And yes, we did some research on it, some, some uh, peer-reviewed research, and the only things that we use are based on these research, and of course, on the, the all the rules that should be considered in the Europe and all over the world. And of course, it's not an ultraviolet, it's, it's uh, the, and, the, and, the, and the liquid inside is just water, for human beings. Human beings. So, but the particles are something like eucalyptus or something like that. Okay. And our offset is uh, expert, separate, and we can Thank you so much. One question, a very short question with a very short answer, please. How, how much do you want to sell it for? Uh, Sir, that's a very good question. So our plan is to sell it uh, for 40 to 55 zero euros for the rest of your life. So, uh, and that's it. So, and so we, we predict that every mask should work more than 10 years. So, thank you. Now it's time to uh, think which greatly want to give the team and rice your paper with a great above your head. Thank you and thank you very much. So, really great, interesting pictures in this track, too, very diverse. And here, too, um, it's now about the winner of this track. And even more, we have now time left for a small speed of networking. Um, we have 25 minutes, and please make sure to be back on your seat at around 5.20. That we have enough time later on for speeches. There's one thing I would like to mention. Here above in the back, you see some boards. Students from, in, from the incubator had there the chance to drop some ideas, some startup ideas. And if you, especially of course the jury members, but also welcome to the others, want to go into discussion with the people um, written this there, you're welcome to get into a small talk with them to raise a question, discuss with them, and of course, maybe with your favorite startup teams. So take some drinks. Um, I think the drinks are there. There. OK, there in the front, you find the drinks. So looking forward to find you back here at this on your seat at 520. We will have also alarm here five minutes before we start that, that you know that it's up to take your seats again. Enjoy.
asked one. But before we uh, start with the track, and before I want to ask Mr. Granke a few further questions, before I would like to um, tell you how the schedule looks like. Here in the next room, there's awaiting a great buffet, so please don't eat, meanwhile, anything, because there's enough to eat for everybody. And um, we have after track three, um, the overall ceremony um, for the winner, done by Mr. Granker in an award ceremony. I'm sure we have to be quite fast, but um, I'm really looking forward to that. After that, there is a get-together here and next rooms with food and drinks. And from 7 p.m., there is a live DJ and lounge. And then, of course, for some of you, there's a special program in addition you um, might know. Otherwise, I'm happy to um, guide you there after the official part. So, um, again, I will meet Mr. Grenke here downstairs and would like to drop two questions um, about him as an entrepreneur. <laughs> Mr. Grenke, um, you're an entrepreneur and you founded a company. You know also how important digitization is. And uh, is the digitization for you the solution of everything to be successful in a way? Of digitalization is of course very important, but it's not all. Um, I think uh, we must meet a lot of uh, things additional. Yeah? Um, and from my point of view, it's um, um, so that um, uh, the processes in a company must work really good. Um, 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 and um, when the process is not working, you cannot do anything with the digitalization. You have some bad processes at the end, yeah? even digitalized. Yeah? This is not, not, not a help stand. So uh, to invest there, the, the, the money that really the process are uh, really good working, not only the money, your time, of course, mm -hmm. uh, additional, this is very important for success. So reviewing the processes would be one solution for further success. Yeah, that's from my point of view very important. Thank you so much. Then we move on to the track three. And I'm sure you all look forward to next level technology. This will be the topic of track three. And therefore, I'm happy to see here on the stage uh, Nico Ovzianowski, the founder of Aura Tangible NFTs. Welcome here on stage. Uh, you probably think, oh no, the NFT guy is here, it's about to get scare me. Um, let's see about that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I am Nico Zanowski, the co-founder of Aura, which is a Berlin-based Web3 and augmented reality company. And before I start to present the project that I'm going to talk about, I would love to ask you two questions. Um, everybody here in the room, who has heard of the term the metaverse? Just heard of it, please raise your hand. Yeah, the majority is up. Second question is, who, is uh, who knows where the technical exact difference is between the metaverse and a game? Let's say like a virtual game or like Second Life. Who knows that? Yeah, the majority is down. Um, this is funnily enough exactly the problem um, that the space is actually having at the moment. Um, I want to give you a real life example, um, but before I do so, I would give you the answer in two words. The words, first one is originality and the second one is ownership. And in real life, it works like this. Imagine yourself holding an autograph of, let's say, Michael Jackson. It's a handwritten original. And your friend next to you, he has an exact same copy of that. Well, now when you say, I have an autograph, and he says, so do I, he would say, no, yours is just a copy. I could sell mine, mine is worth a lot, but his isn't. Even though it looks the same, it feels the same. A market where they spend 30,000 euros and more into the millions for a profile picture. Uh, it doesn't, like, it's not too interesting. So either you're a pioneer or you want to trade when you get into it. It is just not relevant for everybody else. And this is where Visions comes in. Visions is a platform that we built to have an experienceable uh, yeah, way to, 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 have, to make NFTs tangible even. Tangible, which means you can interact with them. They are not limited to this virtual space anymore. 
because we use augmented reality. We also use geolocation and therefore we create a lot of ways to have new utilities for, for energy. This means it is not only helping the space, because this is actually a problem right now, everybody is just using a marketplace or anything, but it also, we are also about the ease of access. So we want to not only have the space, but also get more people into it, because mass adoption is still lacking. And the way we do that is we do not want you to do 50 hours of research to understand the topic. You can just log in, and then you have access to it. You do not have to have a big wallet to access it, because you can just collect an NFT on the street. Maybe a fraction of it. Maybe it's something that has been around for a while. And now NFTs are not limited to the two dimensions of the screen, but they can be 3D, like in the metaverse, for example, like in Decentraland. They can be three-dimensional objects and assets that you can actually interact with. And this is what we built. And when I say we, I'm, I talk about not only myself, but also my co-founder. We have a film farming and augmented reality company in 2020 back then and developed some hardware. We have a patented company now. And we took that expertise and combined it with this new space. We also have three employees who, ex who expand our coding experience. And we are fortunate enough to have some investors and advisors on board who help us with their expertise and the network. At the moment, we opened up the round that we raised again to two million. We um, do, did that due to interest of investors. And we are also looking for, <laughs> for office space in Berlin. So if anybody has uh, some space in Charlottenburg or maybe Hackerschirm Mark or something, I would love to get into some details. And uh, I think it is uh, time for us to get into some uh, questions about the project. Thank you very much. So thank you, and yeah, juries can drop some questions. Yes, please. How do you develop or to explore your market? Because it's a very focused market, so uh, you need a special strategy for that. Yes, we have, uh, like some of our investors have also invested in Berlin-based and like a globally-based NFT project, which help us to give access into to some more experience than we. We have been in the space since, since 2020. We have been looking into everything uh, back then, we are now suffering from the bear market as well, but um, our expertise is not sufficient enough. So we try to get as much uh, research into with our own hands and also connect with the, uh, additional founders. We're part of, uh, we're friends with the We Fund from Berlin. We're also friends with the Timeless Invest uh, people and our investors have, as I said, been investing in other projects as well, which helps us to understand the market even more. It's a very noisy market. It's very scammy uh, as well. Um, therefore, we, we are lucky enough to, to know the right people for this one. Is the world today an, an exhibition of NFTs or a shop where you can buy NFTs or what? Yes and yes. So yes it's about, yes. Well, there are different perspectives we can take. There, due to the technology we use uh, for, you guys, for, for everybody to collect an NFT, we can also build a marketplace website. But we're not only about that. We give you, as a creator, for example, we give you a creator hub and minting as a service. That means you don't have, you don't have to understand what it needs for you to take action in this space, to get into this space. And those functionalities, they are very close, closely connected when it comes to the code. However, we build those features ourselves. And we have partners with a lot of minting as a service companies from Germany as well when it comes to more utility-focused contracts. Which NFTs mar uh, NFT markets are you focusing on mostly? And um, is currently a good time to get into NFTs if we look at the past two, three weeks? Therefore, it is the best time. The, the market is down, which means if you want to get into it, do it now because it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's still expensive, but, but there's not much to lose anymore. But uh, the funny thing is that we know from the uh, investments that have been taken, the market is going up again. It's always the same. It has been in 2018 and 2015, the same thing. Um, so I wouldn't panic right now. The first question was, are we focusing on specific NFTs? No, we are a multi-chain project. We are building to be become an omni-chain project, and any type of file will be and is already be able to be seen and interacted with on our platform. We finished our technical build today, and we start the testing phase tomorrow. I'm very proud of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So. Um, It's time to decide.
for a number and to rise your grade above your head and drop a note on your slot. Some are still thinking, here we are. Oh, very good. <laughs> so, um, we get to the next one. Highly integrated small satellite antennas. Production and services are behind the product of Celestial founded by Mayang Sharma and presented today by Johannes Schumacher. Welcome. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Johannes Schumacher. I'm one of the founders of uh, Celestial Space Technologies, and Celestial is a satellite system provider, and we are an expert in delivering telecommunication solutions uh, to satellites. Our vision, actually, is to develop affordable solutions to enable deep space companies, or new space companies, rather, to reach uh, higher orbits and to go to deep space at uh, reduced cost and uh, with better connectivity. This is why we are working very closely with our customers to design high-performance and reliable satellite antennas, all customized to their mission requirements. And uh, we're actually developing our products to a diverse client base, including new space companies, um, old space companies, research institutes, and uh, also space agencies. So after some um, initial test runs with our production line, we already have uh, flight-ready hardware in hand for exhibition, but also delivered to the industry. And we actually have an uh, in-orbit demonstration happening uh, this year. So this is one of our antennas uh, that we have uh, manufactured that I'm holding here. Um, in, uh, in hand. But uh, the problem we see in the space industry at the moment is that uh, small satellites have limited available power and uh, limited uh, communication capabilities and also a lifetime. This is why we started our R&D on a highly integrated uh, system. We will combine uh, an antenna and a solar panel and I have this uh, demonstration model uh, right here and with that eliminate the usual trade-off decision between both payloads, so antenna and uh, solar cell. Instead, the satellite can have um, both payloads on every face, on every side of the satellite, and with that, satellites can uh, extend their communication capabilities into all directions uh, without compromising on available power. So this is of particular interest to um, inter-satellite, to the case of inter-satellite uh, communication links. So um, as of now, actually our story began in 2018 already with a um, university hackathon right here in Berlin, just across the street. Uh, my co-founder, Mayank, he is a space engineer. He has uh, expertise in the telecommunication and uh, RF um, field. Myself, I am an, an industrial engineer. I have expertise in uh, business management. And um, we have also, we are international. It's an international team. <coughs> so, but uh, looking ahead to achieve our, our vision of uh, small satellite deep space missions, we plan to extend our product portfolio to all kinds of satellite subsystems. But our focus of uh, technology development will be on uh, highly integrated and uh, efficient uh, systems. Long term, we want to develop our own proprietary satellite bus and offer that to the industry. And this satellite will also be capable of uh, deep space missions. So to get there, we are actually looking right now for 200,000 euros to fund our R&D, uh, but also to reach our uh, sales goals with our existing uh, products. So yeah, thank you for the attention. Um, the best way to follow uh, the progress of Celestial is actually via LinkedIn, but also feel free to uh, connect with me uh, later. So with the right, we're small right now, but with the right support, we can actually reach our vision of uh, small satellite uh, deep space missions. And with this in mind, as my co-founder likes to say, if you want to find a unicorn, don't be afraid to ride a horse. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Johannes. So feel free to ask Johannes some questions. Yeah? Yeah, this is uh, apparently rocket science, and I really wonder how you can get there with 200K. Yeah? Uh, so how much money do, would you actually need to get a marketable product? 
So this is what I have in hand right now is a marketable, marketable program already. So we are on the market, we have satellite antennas. Like I said, this is a flight ready. We also have a first customer. Uh, the antenna is in design, will soon be uh, in manufacturing and uh, also go to orbit. Uh, for this system you're asking, right? So for this system specifically, 200,000 euros is uh, most likely going to be enough. Um, so we have an entire work plan and budget plan uh, for this. Um, this is uh, all worked out. And since this is an antenna, it's a rather, they, they call it a passive uh, component. There's also antennas which have electronics, those are active components, they're much more uh, complex to design. This is one of the simpler forms of uh, the antennas. Uh, with 200,000 euros, we can uh, buy the materials and um, manufacture the antennas, get the solar cells, integrate all of this. Um, and this is also a job for not too many people. Um, this can be done within eight months. The expensive part is the testing and the qualification for space. Uh, this actually will cost a few 10,000 euros, uh, but this is, this is doable within uh, 200K. Yeah, this would be great if afterwards you can here drop the roll and, and show the yeah, jury members um, from the front. Right this is the demonstration model only, to demonstrate the concept. Here's a further question, please. So the amount of 200,000 uh, is just for the product. Uh, but uh, have you also calculated your cost of living for you, yourself, and your, uh, your, your colleague? Uh, yes, uh, this uh, requirement is going to be with uh, the four, within eight months, uh, you will be able to get the Okay, one question, short question. Yeah. The satellites planned for this decade, which and expectations for this ranges from 10,000 to 100,000. There's many satellites going up to space uh, this uh, this decade. Uh, they all need antennas, right? If you go by, by tens of thousands of uh, satellites and by uh, two antennas per satellite, we come up to a total available market of uh, 600 million euro cumulative uh, this, uh, this decade. We, uh, we are an engineering company, so manufacturing is outsourced. We design the antennas. They can be either based on available designs, which maybe require slight modifications, or completely customized. In the end, we have our network manufacturer. We deliver the hardware, charge for the hardware, but also for the engineering. A uh, very short question, please. Are you able to get IPs for what you are doing now? To get a what? IP, um, for this new system, yeah, this is, this is um, interesting for, for patents, yeah. The antennas we have right now, they're not relevant because antennas are customized to every mission anyway. No point in getting a patent. But this new system, uh, possible. We're looking into this, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So it's up to the jury to um, give again a grade and raise uh, the paper above the head. Maybe Johannes, you want to see the numbers? So we continue with the pitch of Arthur Steffen, founder of iFactory 3D, an automated IY um, supervised additive manufacturing with infinite part length. Thank you. The uh, alumni from the first batch of entrepreneurship at SRH. And since then we had a hell of a ride. So iFactory 3D turns basically anyone into a manufacturer. If we look today at the, uh, at the traditional manufacturing methods, we have like vacuum forming, injection uh, forming, CNC. All of that is too expensive for small batch production or even for entrepreneurs like you. Either it's too small if you want to go for injection molding or the logistics take too long, for example, from China to get here to Europe. At the moment, if you want to do injection molding, it takes six to 12 months waiting time even to get the form, the metal piece, just for that. And in the end, 10% of the products that are being created are thrown away, which is about 20% of the entire worldwide GDP. So 
this could be solved by additive manufacturing, but additive manufacturing faces two big problems today. Number one, the size. As the colleagues showed before, they were limited in the printing size. Number two, automation. In order to really to make uh, serial production, we need always humans to remove the object from the print bed, restart the process again, which requires always a human babysitting the machine. And if you want to really do big uh, objects like that, holes, the printers are like the half of the room and cost you half a million to a million easily. So iFactory 3D developed a, a proprietary belt printer technology that you can see over the here. We use a belt, a conveyor belt, as our base in order to 3D print. That enables you infinite length. I have here an object of um, 80 centimeters. I couldn't take the Berlin TV tower because we printed the TV tower of two and a half meters, but from Dusseldorf to over here, it, was, it would be a nightmare to carry it on a train. <laughs> and you can make serial production. And we have hundreds of customers that are already making shoe insoles with companies that are actually making millions of shoe insoles, and they use hundreds of injection forms to even footwear for horses and many, many more objects. This uh, geometry of 45 degrees has many advantages. For example, it doesn't require uh, support, which is like additional support structure that is needed for that. We save material, we save time, and new geometries are possible with that technology. Furthermore, why are we different from other companies? Yes, there are two companies in China working with on the same uh, technology. But here we work on software, which is a printer guard that does error monitoring software, monitoring for prints, uh, error prints. Two, we do not only this kind of hardware. At the moment, we work of, for printers of half meter to a meter in width, uh, with which we are unique worldwide. Then we do a lot of material science, not only to make plastics, as well as uh, polymer and metal-based materials, carbon fiber, fiberglass, and others um, that can be printed. And thirdly, service. B2B requires service. Companies want to uh, do, do a phone call and they want somebody today or tomorrow to come to the factory and help them with their production. And this is why we are unique. Our business models, we, of course, we do the sales to the clients, hence, we will offer as well financing, leasing, hopefully together with Genki Bank. Um, and we actually work on new business models. I will come to that in a moment. The market in additive manufacturing is growing at a fast pace of on average 20% a year. But with that technology, we expand the market because we are facing the technology on people who couldn't afford particular technology, who couldn't afford injection molding. So we will expand the market as well. Our team, we are six people full employed with more students and freelancers uh, helping us. If there are students who want to make an internship, please contact me. So my call to action today is, number one, first of all, to look for collaborations with the Granke Bank. And number two, because I studied entrepreneurship here and my call is to create together the worldwide first 3D printing um, incubator on entrepreneurship. Because we have people sending us their business plans in the hope that this will um, change their life. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's um, turn of the jury. Uh, who wants to start with asking questions to Steven? Yes. So what is the target market? Is it just uh, countryside or is it just worldwide you're addressing to? So we have um, shipped products to over 28 countries so now, for now. Uh, currently we are uh, focusing on DAF and uh, we receive orders from US. And it's um, at the moment SME and uh, we will stay there for some particular time because our price range is for three and a half to, with the bigger machines, to 15,000. And of course we can add more euros to that. Um, but we're not there yet for the Daimler or Volkswagen. So SME, uh, DAF region and uh, US. Or just LOI? We made half a million, half a million revenue. Okay, that's great, yeah. And we have more, uh, we have, for example, a US client with a pre contract of 200 units. We have um, that company, HEMA, which is um, one of the big shoe insole suppliers with LOI for 35 euros. They already ordered one. 
We have Belgian companies for uh, orthopedic shoe insoles. Uh, we have partners uh, like the th 3DK Berlin for the materials. They as well sent us clients and we built uh, actually a special version like a dental printer for a very large distributor. Any further questions? Is there the printers or is there a, a recurrent uh, component as well? So at this point, because we are quite young company, we're selling the printers, then material, printer guard, we're still in development. Uh, we're training the AI models, two cameras, because that's a SaaS model that we add on top and we basically add on top services. We will sell additional service packages. What we notice that even companies like Daimler, the knowledge is they have kind of knowledge asymmetry in the company so that we sell them additional services that they can basically collaborate as we can provide them printing as a service as well. So, thank you very so much. Thank Kevin. you. Pleasure. And it's up now to the jury to um, think about the grade. Maybe, Stephen, you want to stay here to watch the grades <laughs> rising. <laughs> so, if you are still missing. <laughs> wow. So the final pitch will be made by Martin Heuer, founder of OZ1 and Advanced MRI Technology. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, the very first person on stage. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, hi, good afternoon. I am Martin, researcher and activist in the domain of open source hardware. You may recall the term open source from the context of Wikipedia or Linux. For hardware, this means that the design files are published under free open license so anybody can replicate and basically uh, maintain and modify the machine. I'm also chairman of a small organization conducting research, development, and education for open source hardware, and I'm writing my um, PhD in open standardization at the Fraunhofer Institute here in Berlin in cooperation with Beam. What fascinated me ever since about the concept of open source is its socioeconomic impact and its potentially higher market penetration. That's a cool combo, I think. Um, in fact, I'm standing here today because I came across a very interesting product that from my perspective could disrupt the medical market such as Android did for the smartphone market. I don't know if anybody still remembers Windows phones over here. Um, so the product is called OZ1, and it is an open source MRI scanner. I bought some pictures, so to have yeah, the pictures for that, and you can use them along the lines. So MRI is one of the most powerful imaging techniques for medical diagnosis. Since it doesn't rely on any toxic radiation, you can do that as many times as you want to, to any part of the body and to any patient, even babies. The real limiting factor about MRI scanners are, is the price. So MRI scanners are incredibly expensive to build, maintain, and also operate. A usual MRI scanner costs about 3 million euros, plus 10% annual maintenance fees, because you cannot maintain it yourself or contract independent service providers for that. Um, and you need a dedicated infrastructure for the MRI in place to function. And hospital is basically built around the MRI scanner for security and infrastructure reasons. What you see here and on the pictures is the first prototype of OZ1 that has been built in hackathons. It is about like that, that size, but would be suitable even for mobile applications, which would be unthinkable with usual MRIs. Um, if sold as a DIY kit, it would be available at about 30,000 euros. That is about 1% of the costs of a usual MRI system. You can imagine how many more applications would be possible and how many more countries could afford MRI technology then. Also, maintenance costs, of course, are pushed to, limit, uh, to a minimum. Even if you don't choose to maintain it yourself, you can still contract independent service providers to do that for you. Well, since this is no longer an R&D question, the only missing link is a company that would distribute these MRI systems in the world. 
And from a conventional standpoint, this may sound counterintuitive. How can a business that relies on open source be profitable? Well, in fact, I had an own lecture on open source-based business models here at SRH, and for OZ1, the short answer is, well, of course it can be profitable. It, is, it can be sold just like any other product, and you can offer uh, related services such as leasing, maintenance, or also modification for special deployments. Uh, the difference is that we are faster and we do not need to bear the costly development alone since we're deeply rooted in the open source community which has access to public funding, such as research grants. I talked these things through with one of the co-founders, Dr. Lukas Winter from the Physikalisch-Technische Bundesanstalt here on the corner, who sadly cannot be here today. He's at a conference in London. And I came to the conclusion that I will potentially hate myself forever if I don't take the opportunity, so I decided to quit my job at Fraunhofer and focus on, on OZ1 instead. I believe that this could really contribute to solve the global shortage of imaging techniques and give a positive impulse towards a more open and collaborative medical supply in general. Thanks. Thank you so much. So um, please ask your question. There's the first one. Is there a potential problem to certify an open source product for uh, usage for human sciences? In fact, it is, well, in practice, no. Well, theoretically, no. In practice, it's even easier because people are more likely to collaborate. We already, there's, well, still just on that stage, we already got contacts through Charité and uh, Beuterschule. Uh, that would help us in the medical application of that. And once this is certified, all products with the same design would be certified as well. But even without that certification, <coughs> it would be already usable for industrial um, applications and veterinary medicine. So another question? Is that the hardware mm -hmm. and software you sell, or is it yeah. just the... Yeah, um, uh, the project was founded 2016, and in these years, not only this has been developed, all the whole measurement system behind that, but also a whole ecosystem of tools, including a simulation system that, well, simulates the MRI and the magnetic field, so the uh, future developments of that would be even faster because we can test the performance digitally. Yeah, and, and more stuff. And when you check the QR code on the picture, you can yeah, see you all the products. Yeah. Right. And you really are talking about the first thing <coughs> and you are talking about 30,000 euros only. 30,000 euros as a DIY kit. So okay. if it would be manufactured, well, this is not optimized yet. That is just okay. like what the components would cost and as the yeah. prototype stage. So I, I think we could push that below 20,000 at least. Okay. And then plus the, the assembly of it. Yeah. Um, I think between 80 and 100,000 depends where we develop the actual okay. measurement. Okay. A short further question. To the market entry approach of you. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is further our research. So there is not so much going on in the market yet. Where there there is one other competitor in the U.S. Hyperfine. They are not up at the market yet, but they um, have a product in place. Um, they didn't release any concrete numbers in the interviews, but I saw I read something about half a million for the product. But they are planning more to go towards the leasing less than the, the selling of the actual product. And they're not open source, so that I think um, would be yeah, a unique selling uh, proposition in my opinion. So thank you very much. <laughs> no, it's up to the jury to again give a great and rise the paper. Martin, maybe you want to stay close to see the numbers? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that brings me to a final question. I want to drop to um, Mr. Grenke. Here you are. Thank you. <laughs> 
So, Mr. Grenke, you are the supporter here of the SIH Grenke Center for Entrepreneurship, and you are offering also um, awards. Um, what would be your, your, yeah, your kind of um, tip, or what should, what is your takeaway you would like to give to the groups presented here today? I think first. Um we should say thank you for so many wonderful ideas um, and uh, for the presentation of you. Um, it was really um, very good uh, presentations and ideas. Um, and um, I would be pleased um, if the award in the future is then um, associated with the factors of customer benefit and competit competitive advantage, as I have mentioned before. Um, that is, uh, has given uh, guided me my whole life, uh, and um, I was successful with this. Um, and uh, I would be happy to see uh, adopt by up and coming uh, entrepreneurs. Um, so thank you very much. I think uh, this is the best ideas I have heard <laughs> in the last uh, time. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I would like you to um, stay here with me for just um, one minute to share a news, um, because Mr. Grenk and I, we are co-editing um, a book which will be published end of the year. I hope for the Christmas, um, Christmas that we can give it there and it can be, can be, sold, can, can be bought there. It's a book um, about yeah, successful entrepreneurship with a focus on SDGs. As I think in nowadays, it's not just about being successful without being sustainable, and um, one belongs together and sustainable in a social, economical, and ecological way. And I'm very happy that we do this project together, and um, I'm really looking forward to you. Who's maybe interested? There's a last call. Uh, we have, I think, two slots left or three. Yeah, yeah. Who's interested to join us in the book is welcome to ask Mr. Grenko or me. So very happy to have this project together here. Yeah. I'm looking forward. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so give us a few minutes here, um, because I think Rajan uh, and the group needs it, uh, to finalize the certificates and, of course, discuss if all the grades match to the certificates. So just give us maybe two, three minutes. The jury needs here to um, define and sign, and then we are back with the final, um, yeah, with the final decision. and with a ceremony. Thank you.
just one thing I would like to mention. Before the break, I chose the, uh, there, there are some screens here, some, some two boards. These boards are from the incubator module. And some students also being here just dropped their ideas there. So if there is any idea which you like, please don't hesitate and ask the students because they are really happy if you're interested to, to talk with them about that. Um, I'm not sure how far the ideas are, but I'm sure that there are some interesting things and the students would be happy if they can present. Yeah? So take the chance and look at that. Um, we need another, I think, Julian, five minutes? Okay, so we need another five minutes. So if uh, some of you just want to take a look here at, um, at the whiteboards over there, and you know, and see if there's something drop your attention. Then um, I'm happy if you use the time for that. In approximately five minutes, we continue. Mr. Grenke is currently in about giving his signatures. <laughs>
think uh, when we open the door to the right to find some really great food, please, as I said, um, please don't hesitate to eat as much as you want as enough. Of course, we call them like over 150 people. <laughs> Thank you.